The building supply company has been at the forefront of building innovations for over 25 years. And we're about to show you the latest in Hebel modular panel systems. Stay with us while we visit a building site that's been under construction for some time now, showing the benefits of the Hebel solid panel systems. Identifying the, uh, the frustrations that builders and developers get with dealing with bricklayers, waste on site, overruns. And this will clearly identify the benefits of using a Hebel solid modular wall system. The system I'm about to show you is a 250mm blade bearing commercial wall panel uh, used as a domestic application. So there's no structural steel supporting the wall structures at all and obviously has some huge advantages with the system. Uh, we've been involved uh, on this site for about three days now installing Hebel panels so you can see the productivity, uh, the speed of erection and what we call is the accidental advantages that we've come along the way. Um, in particular the use uh, or the lack of use of scaffolding required because we're working behind wall faces um, and which is significant cost benefit. So as you can see, three days work, um, three quarters of the panels have been installed. We'll go through some of the details uh, to this date. This is our third project. Uh, the project we've done before are now four years old, so there's good longevity in the system. Uh, you'll find that the tie down details, um, the control movement because we're using a panel system rather than a block system has some huge advantages. But if you look at these panels here, you can see we've got a 250mm thick Hebel panel. That achieves an R rating of 2.5 in itself. Uh, in some areas where a higher rating is required, you may just have to use a, an internal batten and uh, create some airspace, which will get you to your 2.7. But you can see this panel here is 5.3 metres long. Within this panel, there's 375 bricks. So can you imagine that as a double skin brickwork, how long that would take to install? Okay, we've just about uh, got the crews in order here. They're uh, gonna bring the crane and the jib down. Uh, we're gonna take this panel here, which is 5.3 metres long, and it'll be positioned on top of that wall as the top panel. Um, one of the big advantages with this system here is the, the lack of steel required for openings for lintels. As these act as beams, as you can see at the end of the panel, there's two layers of reinforcing cast into the panel. So the structural side of the panel uh, acts as a beam in itself. So Trey might just bring that down now and we'll put the grab on. Uh, you can see in the structure where this panel is going, there's two rod, tie down rods at each end of the panel. They go all the way through the panel. So you can see in the panel, they've been caught out. The rods will pass through these grout holes and they will get grouted in. So the structural integrity of that panel wall is significant when you've got a tie down rod both, both ends of the panel. Um, has some huge wind loads uh, and probably ideal for cyclonic areas. They can be beefed up accordingly. Um, you can see the ease of the grab that's just connected to it. Uh, that panel will probably weigh around about 500 to 550 kilos. So there's some significant weight in it. Um, the crane that we're using here is a quite a large crane because we have to reach to the back of the building and the crane cycling needs to be uh, fairly significant. On other sites that we've used cranes, uh, they haven't been that big because uh, we've got the luxury here of having a fairly large area to lay panels out. In an urban site, we don't have that uh, luxury. So it's a matter of uh, strategic planning and um, coordinating deliveries in the right sequence so panels can be offloaded in the same way that they're installed. So the panels are just being prepared now. Uh, quite often there's a few dags under the panels for manufacturing process that have to be cleaned out. And uh, if you follow me, we might just go for a walk around the building to show you uh, the rear side of it. Now this will probably give you a bit more of an idea of the number of panels uh, that we have done in three days. This will probably be our last day uh, with the crane. So we'll be just topping off um, all of these top uh, panels at the moment. These walls are three metres high. Uh, we can do a 2.7 high traditional wall height by just introducing a 300mm panel as a base panel to start with. Um, the base panels in this application have the damp course layer uh, on the block work um, and we have used a 200mm Hebel floor panel system on this project obviously to try and create that maximum thermal cube that we're, we're trying to uh, achieve thermal efficiency. So you can see it's lifting in at the moment. Normally at this stage of construction, if this was double brickwork, there would be scaffold all the way around the perimeter of, the, of this uh, wall, the house. Uh, so that's a huge uh, cost saving. There will have to be scaffold used eventually, uh, but that's money for edge protection and fascia and gutter, so 
we've probably cut down at least two to three weeks in scaffold hire uh, on this project, so um, that's certainly a big advantage. The uh, panel is bedded uh, with heaval adhesive, so on both sides of the tongue and groove joint there, there is heaval adhesive that bonds the panel as well. We use a flexible adhesive. Because of the 250 mil thick nature of the panel, the wall structure stays fairly straight and plumb. It's critical that the first panel is put in plumb and straight and square. Uh, the time spent on that is uh, well worth it because the walls would just follow the panel up. The panels are fairly precise in the manufacturing process. Uh, occasionally we might have to put a small wedge in it to pull the panel back plumb, but these have been extremely good. And you'll see that the walls are straight and true and coatings that are applied over later on uh, are just generally basically acrylic rendered systems. So that panel is in place now and just an estimate I think that's probably taken about five minutes to lay 375 bricks. At the end of each panel we have a control joint, a 10 mil control joint. That, that uh, allows for the minor building movement that's required in all buildings. That's filled with a backing rod and a polyurethane sealant so it makes it waterproof both internally and externally. At the base of the panels, uh, these panels are laid in a, a non-shrink grout on packers so, uh, which is lasered levelled. Um, and we fill that joint also with a polyurethane sealant. In this application, um, because it's not a slab edge, uh, we actually will be putting a 75mm heaval panel over that as a feature to disguise all of that, the floor panels and the heaval wall panels. The, uh, the joints between the two panels, there is a, a an expansion tie that we uh, put in place, which we'll show you in later detail. So what we've developed is a starter angle, which is adjustable, so at the start of the job, um, we set out the walls, we flick the lines, we apply these angles and then the panel is installed and positioned against the vertical face of the um, adjustable angle. Uh, the turnbuckle is then adjusted to make it plumb. The panel is brought in, clamped together and the corner is formed. Once the corner is formed, that holds the panel up in uh, a vertical and secures it, then the angles can be taken away. So from that process then the wall just grows. Um, as you see, the speed of it is quite incredible. So these rods pass all the way through the wall, down onto the, through the floor slab, through the footing. Um, the connection points between the panels, we have the uh, tie bridging the walls, um, driven with two V-nails into the plate, and that secures all the wall. Environmentally, uh, Hevel uses 60% less embodied energy to manufacture compared to clay bricks and blocks, so there's certainly a huge um, environmental bend on the Hebel systems. For many years in the building industry, the common perception was that the only available double skin masonry was two skins of clay brick. The reality is this clay brick only gives you a 0.2 of a thermal rating. The combined effort of a double skin brickwork in reality is 0.6. For many years everybody thought that was probably the, the optimum in full masonry thermal performance. Well, I'll show you the difference. We have one skin there. That's a traditional wall thickness for a, a 240 double skin brickwork. Obviously the 250 heaval wall skin, as I said, is a 2.5 R rating, which gives you extreme thermal ratings. Plain to see, there's a huge difference. One of the huge advantages of this system is the labour resources used. Uh, no longer do you require a team of bricklayers to come in and lay a full masonry system. This uh, panel system which we constructed within uh, a five day cycle of two days of preparation and three days of craning was done with an average of three guys. Um, the skill levels were, were building and carpenter levels, so no longer are you chasing through uh, to bricklayers and labourers. We talked about the waste involved in the building sites and, and the cost involved in uh, getting the waste to, uh, to disposal. This here is our sole um, pile of hebel that's left over from constructing 250 square metres of hebel wall. So you can see it's minimal. I mean on a job like this to have that much waste left over compared to what you would have with double brick uh, is just a huge benefit. Uh, you can see here the guys are just doing the final completion of the, the panels. They're installing the top plate. The top plates are just uh, bolted down at 900 centimetres through the middle of the panel. Uh, you see the threaded rod have actually been drilled into the panel 500 deep. So that gives you enough uh, kilonewton purchase on the panel in the top plate to hold the trusses down.